Good morning, y'all. What's going on? We're heading into week four of the college football season. I got my buddy, Mike, the real McCoy, hanging out. My buddy taking a break from the gym, though, at Maximum Performance in Bessemer. And, you know, we got some football to talk about as we get ready to head into another SEC game for the Alabama Crimson Tide. So we're going to break this thing down in another episode of Head to Head. All right, before we break this thing down, I want to give a shout out to our sponsors, the Alabama Cattlemen's Association, because beef, it's what's for dinner. So, Mike, are you a, are you a big beef eater? I am. You know, I'm a country boy. We hunt, do it all. Um, but typically, once a year, we, uh, me and my family, we get a big cow and we split it up. So, okay. yeah, big. So, is that, oh, that's one of those things where, like, you actually purchase a full cow mm -hmm. and then you've got meat, obviously, for the. Yes, I want the happy cow right there. The happy cow, okay? <laughs> I like the happy cow. Yes. You're a happy guy, I love it. Okay, so let's get into some college football talk. Um, Alabama handled their business 63-7 to against Louisiana Monroe this past week. A couple things, number one, I thought the energy was good. I think that's something Nick Saban praised, the energy you come out, that's something he's always preaching. Gotta have the energy. Will Anderson, the pick six, nice little momentum swing for that young man. Then the last thing I would say, wide receiver position, still something I'm trying to figure out. I think Alabama's still trying to figure out like who's going to be their go-to target. Do you have any thoughts about that? Like who is kind of standing out to you that you're like, ah, oh, I think this, I think there's some glimmer here. I think there's some hope. No, it gives probably the most explosive for me as far as offense is concerned. I feel like the play call was still kind of basic, so I don't feel like we played a complete game yet. Hey guys, it's ULM, so nobody's going to rant and rave about it. So from my end, I still think they got some proving to do. And you talk about sort of the three phases of the game. One thing you can highlight, though, is how about special teams, man? They did. Now, he played extremely well. Um, I'm confident in that aspect, but still a little shaky about the secondary. Um, glad Will had a, had a better game. I mean, but that's expected when you're going to probably get drafted high as he's going to get drafted. So, hey, just don't mess it up. Don't do nothing more. Don't do nothing less. Just be Will. Be Will. Be Will. Uh, Cooley McKinstry had 136 yards on five returns in the uh, return game. That was pretty, pretty impressive to see. Um, I think another little bit of area concern, the offensive line, I think that is something that's showing a little bit of mm -mm. shakiness. A lot of shakiness. A lot of shakiness. Tell them like it. <laughs> A lot of shakiness. Um, you know, that's kind of been the concern for them. And I think one person that a lot of people are high on that they've been talking about, that freshman, the yes. off freshman offensive line, Ty Tyler Booker. Um, you know, so I think that he is a bright spot and someone that is making an early impact. Uh, so I think the offensive line has a ways to go. Obviously, against Louisiana Monroe, you get 242 rushing yards. I mean, not a bad day. But it is Louisiana Monroe. And with that being said, we're bringing Vanderbilt – to Brian Denny Stadium. And what is actually a much improved Vanderbilt team? Most people, most of the time, would be like, Vanderbilt. Right. Wah. They look good. We're not saying that this year. Mm -mm. Vanderbilt's a good team. Yeah, they definitely stand out on paper. I mean, um, the offense, uh, the schemes that they do, still not sold on them, but they look better. They're not at the bottom of the totem pole. I think Missouri has taken that spot. Um, so, hey. <laughs> they I was uh, wondering where you're going to go in that direction. There's a couple people that <sighs> would question that. And, of course, Missouri's going to Auburn this week, so it'll be interesting to see how that matches up. But with that being said, Vanderbilt 3-1, and one, improved team under Clark Lee in year two for him. And they're looking for their first SEC win since 2019. And while it might not happen this weekend at Bryant-Denny <laughs> Stadium, uh, I do think that this is a cultural shift for Vanderbilt, and I'm anxious to see kind of how things go down. Um, they throttled Hawaii to open the season. That was a pretty impressive win. I know Hawaii's not the greatest team, but to be able to throttle them the way that they did to open things up, impressive. They had a win against Elon, Northern Illinois, to kind of put it out there. And uh, they did put up a fight against Wake Forest, which is a very good team who has a very good quarterback. And so impressive there. So my question for you, we got a two quarterback system. You've got Mike Wright, who is essentially the dual threat quarterback. 
Mm -hmm. And then you got A.J. Swan, who is that prototypical quarterback. So your thoughts on how do you defend against a two-quarterback system? Does this work in Vanderbilt's favor, or is Alabama, you know, coming in with a different mindset? Believe it or not, I think anytime you have a two-quarterback system, I think that goes against um, – that's a – a team's disadvantage that particular team because I don't think you have defined who is that guy mm -hmm. and as a receiver or a running back you get used to certain handoffs certain cues the ball placement um, there's a lot of factor that goes into it even blocking up front you may have a, a guy that's hey man he's known for running but this particular play we have to do pass blocking or pass protection for him so it's a lot of things that go out and kind of go into it. So for Vandy, I'm looking at it as a disadvantage. But um, hey, who am I? I don't know too much, you know. But I don't think it's going to be anything spectacular. I think we'll be kind of be able to contain them. And if something do runs outside and get to the outside, hopefully don't run to the secondary. But I think <laughs> Will and Dallas Turner will do the job. So. I'm just curious to know if you pull the curtain back for us. When you do have two quarterbacks in a system like this, how does that look in practice? Like, take me through, like, what it looks like in practice if you're, you know, an offense preparing for that. Well, I can tell you one Defense, thing. Defense, I'm sorry. No, Defense Coach Saban that. will probably do like he always does. He'll probably find one of the kids that are probably going to redshirt, one of the scout team guys that highly recruit, put them in that quarterback. Hey, go catch this wet bar of soap, you know, so – I think that's going to prepare them. Um, he always has a plan. So remember a few years back when he was having former players come down and give the guys a look. So I hope I can say that on camera. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, but <laughs> Coach Saban, is a, he's a mad scientist. So I think he'll be definitely ready for this week. Yeah, and I think these two quarterbacks do pose a threat for this defense. I think it'll be a good test for this Alabama defense, no doubt about it. Again, A.J. Swan, more of the prototypical quarterback. you got Mike Wright, obviously the dual threat. And we know the dual threat quarterback has definitely hurt Alabama in years past, and so how are they going to mm. stack up against him? Um, they can also run the football pretty darn well. Will Shepard there, Jaden McCowan, and they can also make some big plays in the air. So I think explosive plays are something they're going to have to limit. So I think if you let, uh, you know, AJ get out there and make some you know create some explosive plays and then you know of course let Mike Wright get you on your feet I think that could make for a little bit of a longer day for this Crimson Tide team and um, the defense is going to have to button things up and keep things right and then from an offensive standpoint we talked about it a little bit off camera Alabama not dialing up a whole lot of flashiness in the in the offensive side of the football kind of your thoughts on that and where that takes us the rest of the season when we get into some of these tougher opponents tell them like it is Mike you said it off camera. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to encourage you to. Still not sold. I think we are running elementary offense. I think it's, it's kind of like A&M. It's basic. We have exceeded the times. It's a spread offense now. Let's, let's add a thing out. Let's run some combo routes. Can we see some double moves? Can I see you take the top off? I mean, goodness. It's like watching cold paint dry. There's no creative from, from what I'm seeing. And I feel that you have the kind of caliber players on the outside and in the backfield that can get it done. There's no reason why Alabama should not have at least 400 average yards per game, total offense. So, hey, hey O'Brien, hey, man, give me a call. I got a couple things drawn up. You know, I got some old plays that I can show you. You know, give me a call, man. No harm, no foul. I still love you. All right, so what's your prediction, my man? Mmm, prediction. I know Bama's going to at least get 42. Give me, uh, I'm going to take 48, 10. All right. 48, 10. We aren't, we aren't too far off there. Uh, I got Alabama 52 to 20. 20? Come on. I'm going to give now. Vandy 20, y'all. And that's just because I think that this Vanderbilt team is much improved, as we talked about. The dual, th the, the, the dual threat quarterback, and obviously you've got the, the two quarterback system, not sure what they're going to do. I think that they can hang. I think they can hang a couple touchdowns on Alabama, potentially. Maybe get a, a, a passing touchdown, a run touchdown in there, a couple field goals. 52 to 20. I don't know. I might if, be if speaking out of turn. This is an NIL deal. They get 20, I buy her and her husband a meal. All right. Brought to you by Alabama Beef Farmers and Ranchers.